All right, so to start, man, you got to introduce your first, first and last name and tell us where you're from. Yeah, so my name is uh, Samuel Nieves. Most people just call me Sam. Uh, and I am uh, born and raised in Chicago, lived here all my life, um, lived particularly in like the humble park, like Logan Square area. Yeah, so it's about where I've been so far. I've not really been much of a traveler, so I haven't really been exploring outside of Chicago much. Okay, so humble park, man. So like, you grew up there? Yeah, I, I grew up here. I lived here like my whole life. Like I, I literally went from living on one part of the street that I, I currently live on to like a different part of that street. Like I moved once and I could live on the same street technically, uh, oh. in, like the same exact area. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Cool. Amazing. So then like, man, what's your experience growing up in Chicago? Man, you humble parks that never really moved outside the neighborhood. So like what, what was it like there growing up for you? Yeah, so. Uh, not really too much to write home about, honestly. Uh, generally, like I definitely see like um a lot more of improvements nowadays compared to how it was before. Cause like literally, like I I could walk outside and like stroll like maybe a block and I see like maybe like six or seven closed businesses. So like it definitely like that type of neighborhood where like you just see like constantly like a bunch of businesses closing, opening, closing, opening that sort of thing. Yeah. But yeah, now lately there's been a lot more like remodeling done with like the the overall like city, the park, just like the buildings popping up everywhere. Um, it's just definitely been getting better than it was before. Cause I remember there was times where like I would be woken up by like the sound of like sirens going on outside my house because like something happened, uh, and that would happen like maybe once or twice a week. So definitely not at that point anymore, thankfully. <laughs> yeah, man, that's what's up. That's what's up. So man, growing up there, you think about like. You know, life before a rework, man. You know, I I know you you did a couple of the programs, and you can talk about those that. But like, what uh, what kind of work did you do? So like, you, well, so first of all, did you, so you said born and raised somewhere part. You went to high school there. I'm assuming you went to high school in the neighborhood, in the CPS. Yeah, so I was I was part of CPS network. But I actually went to uh, Lincoln Park High School, so it was not like my, my neighborhood school. My neighborhood school would actually have been uh, Clemente. But yeah, so I, I got in uh to Lincoln Park High School. Uh, did my whole time there was in like the like orchestra there so like that, that was like my main reason wanting to go there because like I was, i'm like big into music could i play violin um uh, i play like drums percussion that sort of thing so i wanted to be part of that and lincoln park has like one of the best like music uh programs of the cps school so that's what i was all about but yeah like out, outside of like high school and whatnot like i went to college briefly um ended up dropping out for like two two and a half years um and just started working full-time at a restaurant that, uh, that i spent like five and a half years working at wow yeah so i worked as like a waiter server like bus boy basically i did everything that was like the front of house and at some point i actually um was getting training as a, a sushi chef apprentice as well so i was i was like one of the people like working in the back actually preparing sushi but also still doing some of the front of house stuff too at some point because like when i first joined the the restaurant like there was like three or four different servers besides me. Um, we were just kind of like alternate days. Uh, by the time I had left uh, the the restaurant, I was the only waiter still there. Uh, so I was basically covering for like the whole restaurant at that point. Was, uh, so man, so back up. So you said you went to college for, so you was get, go to high school playing music and you go to college for two years. What did you go to college for? Yeah, so that's the weird part. I actually went to college for computer science initially. So I, I started off as computer science for my first uh, two years. And then that last semester, I actually switched over to a music major because um, at that point I realized like I, I wasn't really cut out for, or not that I wasn't cut out for computer science, but that it wasn't something that I can kind of see myself doing long term. Um, so I switched over to music major because that was something that I was more passionate about during, uh, like during that time. Unfortunately, due for like a few different mishaps in my life, like I lost a few loved ones during that time. I had like um, financial troubles and whatnot with like paying bills and stuff like that. So I decided like at this point I'm not enjoying my time at university. I don't feel like I'm gaining much. Uh, so at this point I feel like I might as well just cut off now, just focus on me and like my family. And so that's why I decided to like basically uh, go full time into working. Uh, but full time ended up being way too full time because I ended up working like twelve hour, thirteen hour days, six days a week. That's crazy. <laughs> crazy. And so then you do the restaurant for you said five years almost. Yeah, five, like by five and a half years. So I worked like three years as a waiter server and two and a half years as a sushi chef. Yeah, and then what happened? From there, uh, so that was literally like right around the time of like the whole shutdown happening. Um, so literally like the the two, three months prior to shutdown happening, 
Um, I had a friend who was in the Europe program before. And I was just kind of like venting to him because he was just like a mutual friend I had met in college. And he had told me about the Europe program because he had went through himself. Uh, and I was like, sure, you know what? Let me give this a shot. What else am I kind of doing, basically? And so I signed up for the Europe program and I got accepted in and was scheduled to start like in February, the month right before shutdown. shutdown. And so shutdown happened and because of that like i'm basically furloughed because like the restaurant was going to be closed down for a while so which actually ended up being a blessing in disguise kind of because like i was planning on working like friday saturday sunday while also going to europe and taking college classes uh so that kind of freed up my plate a little bit to have a little bit more time to actually focus on the, those uh school work and so from there i went through like six months of like learning development where i took like college courses at uh, harold washington and ended up getting like a banking certification. And then from there, uh, Europe matched me to um, an internship at LinkedIn. So I had an intern at LinkedIn for about six months. And so the internship happened. How did the internship go? You, you work at LinkedIn now? Or how, what, what happened after that? Yeah, so um, unfortunately, I didn't get converted into the role because like I, I happened to join LinkedIn right at the time where like, they had literally like laid off like a whole department. Um, so there wasn't like a whole lot of room for like new hires at that moment, at least uh, in sales, because that's what, what I was interning as. But overall, like the experience, like working there, like interning there, like was super, super helpful. Uh, picked up a lot of skills that I wouldn't have had otherwise. Like um, I had to do like a lot of Excel stuff. Uh, <laughs> but um, it just so happened like every two weeks or so, I, we would still meet with the Europe on like Wednesdays. And that's actually how I heard about rework. You had actually came in yourself to talk to um, Europe about like rework and like what you were doing and how the whole process kind of looked like. And like about late December, or so I received a message from uh, Yesenia asking like, "Hey, um, are you interested at all in being part of rework? Because I see that you're part of Europe." And I thought to myself like, when I got that email, I was like, "I don't know if I want to do this as well because I'm already doing Europe. I already have this internship. There's going to be kind of a lot on my plate." But then I kind of sat myself down and told myself, like, hey, what else are you doing? Like, just, like, what else am I going to be doing here? So, like, I might as well have, like, a, uh, like, backup plan, so to speak. Um, so I was like, you know what? Yeah, I, I would like to join. And um, so I sat down with Isiana and chatted, and uh, she enrolled me and came to rework. And thankfully, it didn't really impact my schedule as much as I thought it would. I thought it was going to be, like, a lot of, like, extra, um, I guess, uh, uh, I guess the best way to put it is like busy work and it ended up being like a lot more like defined and a lot more like focused work that I wasn't really expecting that much of which really helped me like basically pick up a lot of the skills I was lacking when it comes to like stuff like tech sales stuff like that yeah what was the biggest adjustment that you had to make coming through a rework like what what, what if anything and then like what's the what's your biggest takeaway from rework oh biggest takeaway uh it probably would have to be um well, it'd probably be two different things, to be honest, because they're, they're both super useful. Um, just the the practice with interviewing, because before, like, Rework, I had, like, before Rework and Europe, I never really had any, like, official, like, interview prep or anything like that. Like, I never had to interview for a job. Like, the, the waiter position I had when I was at a restaurant was, um, I just happened to, I was offered a job soon because I knew the, the owner's daughter. And so... I never had to interview for anything before. So getting all that extra prep is actually chatting with industry professionals on like how like they would actually uh, grade me in an interview and like seeing like what their feedback was. That was tremendously helpful. And honestly, it was probably the, the main reason why I even secured a role at a uh, Sprout, uh, which I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. But <laughs> And then the other aspect of that was uh, the Salesforce training, 100%, because I use, I use and live in Salesforce every single day. Uh, and without that Salesforce training, I would not know what to do. <laughs> yeah, solid. And so, like, uh, you mentioned Sprout. So, what do you what do you do now? So, uh, I'm working at Sprout now. So, I am a sales development representative. So, I'm uh, I'm the one that handles, uh, or not one, but I work on a team that handles uh, a lot of the inbound funnel. So, anytime uh, someone requests a demo on our site or someone like sends an inquiry to us, that sort of thing. Uh, I'm usually one of the people that would be responding, uh, which actually shifted a little bit because I actually joined um, a, a team that were kind of like trialing or piloting, I should say. Um, so 
now something new that's been done at uh, Sprout is uh, we have a team of SDRs dedicated to handling uh, tr trials. Uh, so anytime someone like takes out a trial on our website, um, we are the ones that kind of are reaching out to them. And we're doing specifically like uh, small businesses just kind of get our feet wet, basically. And so I've recently joined that team as of this month and I've been helping out there. So a lot of a lot of changes this last month, but definitely good change. Yeah. And so like looking back to like where you, you know, you, you, you think about your journey. So one, do you make more money now? Do you did then? It's like, are you, are you, do you have any regrets of like, you know, do you want to go back to the restaurant industry and work 12 hours? Like, oh my God, no. <laughs> I, I think I, I did like some napkin math on it. And uh, cause like, you, you know, like with the restaurant work, a lot of that, uh, the pay behind that is like tip based. Um, so like I kind of averaged it out and like currently I make like four to five times more per year than I did before. Plus like insurance benefits and all that. So like, I am more than happy where I am. Yeah. If you could think about like, you know, the guy that went to Europe, the guy that, you know, went to college, if you could like, if you could, you know, uh, maybe somebody that is working at 12, 14 hours, maybe somebody got furloughed. If you could send them a message, what, what would you, what would you tell that person? And then at the end of it, uh, you know, we got this, 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 this taglines, get this work. So uh, if you can end it, we get this work. So like whatever the message <laughs> is, like you got to end, we get this work. Yeah, well, uh, for, first, I'll probably start the message off like um, like asking them about like what what's their like current job situation and whatnot. But like the overall like big picture is just going to be like, try it. What's the worst that can happen? Like it, chances are like the person I'm chatting with, they're, they're either like they hate their job, their job list or for load, whatever it may be. So like, what else are they doing at the moment? Like, what else can they be doing to like improve themselves? Like, if they really have to kind of be thinking about it, like, there's no thought to think about really. It's like, just go for it. Uh, like, get that work. Uh, nice, 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 nice. Cool, babe. Now you say get this work for the camera. That way I make sure. <laughs> yeah, they got to get this work. All right, beautiful, man. Solid, man. Appreciate it.